Hey everyone, it's been a while, but we're back with another video and I think this is going to be a good one. This one is going to feel more like a blog. <laughs> I got a lot of words to say because I feel like it needs to be explained, but if you stick with me, um, I, I think you're going to like it. I think that what I found here is a really, really great camera and lens combination that I didn't think would work. But after actually putting it through its paces and using it, um, it worked amazingly and we got some really, really fantastic results. So I want to kind of explain to you and show you how I got to this point because it involved a lot of testing, a lot of throwing caution to the winds and a little bit of money that I had to throw down. But in the end, it actually all came out to be very much worth it. So check it out. Here we go. Here's the story. It's kind of a long one, but bear with me. So for the past few years, ever since 2014, I've been an avid Blackmagic camera user. Started with the production camera 4K, uh, because at the time, you know, who could beat that 4K for $3,000? And that camera obviously had a lot of limitations. The Cinema DNG codec was, uh, unless you were editing on DaVinci Resolve, was very difficult to color. Fast forward a few years and Eventually, I purchased the Ursa Mini Pro, which has been my camera now for the last year. And I haven't been able to use it a lot, but it's always there when I need it. Uh, I've been shooting on the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K now for the last six months. I got it uh, around November, I think around Black Friday. And it's been pretty impressive as well. I only have one lens for it, which I'm actually shooting right now. Um, I'm kind of uh, going through Blackmagic RAW 12 to 1 for these videos now. It's you know, I'm not being paid by Blackmagic or anything to say these things, but I really love the ecosystem that they've built. Um, I'm on an SLR Magic Hyper Prime Cine lens. This is the 10 millimeter on the Blackmagic Pocket, so it looks kind of similar to what like an 18 or 24 millimeter lens would be on a Super 35 camera. And I find that for this kind of blog purpose, it's great. And I'm actually shooting at ISO 1250 right now in the room. Um, I just got my computer monitor as a key light, and I've got. Uh, my room light in the back and um, I know it's causing kind of a conflicting color temperature but you know I don't care I like it it's it looks cool <clears throat> and I think you know it works fine for this purpose but enough about that what I really want to get down to is this amazing combination that I found um, I had to do some tests um, they came out really well I think um, but just to show you first so this is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4k with the 35 millimeter SLR Magic Anamorphot lens. And since it's a two time squeeze on the micro four thirds mount, that's the mount that's actually on the camera, we get this ultra wide aspect ratio because the micro four thirds sensor is a 16 by nine sensor. Whereas these two times lenses, uh, you need to shoot on a four by three. So as you can see here, as the crop goes in, this is what we would crop the sensor to four by three and when de-squeezed properly, we get the appropriate 239 aspect ratio. And so here's what the 35 millimeter gives us. Now, this isn't great because we are sacrificing a lot of the sensor. And on a sensor that's already so small, we don't really want that. So this 35 millimeter looks more like a 50 millimeter on this camera. That was whenever I made the realization that since it's a 16 by nine sensor, I should try to put the 1.33 times squeeze lenses on, which is the PL mount versions. So I knew I was gonna have to get a PL mount adapter. So enter in the Metabones PL to micro four thirds mount T Cine speed booster. Uh, the speed booster ultra 0 0.71 time crop, like crop reducer and also advertising that it gives you an extra stop of light. So this was all very interesting, but the problem with this is that there was very little information online about the lenses that this speed booster was compatible with because there is an optical element inside. And so I threw caution to the winds and decided to purchase it. If it didn't work with these lenses, I was just gonna send it back uh, amazingly enough, it actually does work with the PL mount SLR Magic Anamorphot lenses. At least it, it works with the 35 and the 50 millimeter. I don't know if it works with the 70. My budget didn't really account for all three lenses. I wanted to 
do a short film and I almost never used you know that long of a focal length especially on a micro four-third sensor um, also based on pictures that I found online it doesn't really look like it would fit the speed booster but thankfully the 35 and the 50 do I'm sure that if I could x-ray the lens and the speed booster the 35 would probably fit by a millimeter like it just barely gets in there anyway a quick review of this speed booster it's amazingly made um, the price is expensive but if you are going to use this camera and lens combination um, it's a must-have because uh, I for one really enjoy shooting on anamorphic lenses um, after shooting on them a few times for a few different projects um, I've kind of fallen in love with their affordability um, the characters the character and supposed flaws in these lenses uh, I don't really mind them that much because the films that I tend to direct or DP um, they kind of require that flawed look and so you know you really can't beat them for the money so I went into this with the idea that maybe you know this camera this speed booster and these lenses could all work together in harmony and so here's the test that I did so for context I wanted to put these lenses on my Ursa Mini Pro so you could see how that they look on a Super 35 sensor the way that they are intended the 35 will only cover an APS-C sensor whereas the 50 and the 70 will cover full frame so here you can see the field of view you can see the barrel distortion on the left and the right side of the frame um, this is me just kind of giving you a test uh, this room is about 8 to 10 feet wide and so you can just barely see the wall on each side of it and you can see the distortion as well as how it looks whenever I pan from left to right and how the barrel distortion changes as you get closer to the center of the image circle so taking close watch of that now here is the same lens with the speed booster on the pocket 4k so as you can see here it actually makes the image just a tad wider it's a tad wider the vertical field of view is a little bit less and the horizontal field of view is a little bit wider but the lens behaves very similarly and here's another test of the panning to show the barrel distortion as it moves closer and further from the middle of the element So now we are back on the Ursa Mini Pro, and this is the 50mm Anamorphot. So as you can see, the barrel distortion is a lot less, it's more in tune with what you would norm normally get from an anamorphic lens. Just slight barrel distortion, typical 50mm field of view, that very nice pleasing anamorphic look with the out of focus bokeh in the background. Now we're going to jump to the Pocket 4K with the 50 and Speed Booster. And as you can see, almost an identical field of view. Once again, the vertical field of view shrinks very slightly and the horizontal field of view is just a tad wider. This is actually very exciting because it essentially makes this and a very good A and B camera combination. You can actually use the same PL lenses on both the Pocket 4K and the Ursa Mini Pro or any other similarly sized Super 35 sensor and you're gonna be able to get the same results. You can switch between the two and not have to worry about uh, a lot of difference. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Ursa Mini Pro on the left and the Pocket 4K on the right. 35 millimeter lens on both cameras.
And now here's a comparison of the 50 millimeter on both the Ursa Mini Pro and the Pocket 4K. Here's an interesting thing to note. I have all the settings on both cameras to be exactly the same, color temperature. Um, I have each camera at its native ISO. So the Ursa Mini Pro is at 800 and the Pocket 4K is at 400. And you'll notice as far as exposure goes, they are identical. And that is because the speed booster is giving us the advertised one extra stop of light. There's also two other interesting things to note. You'll notice that the aspect ratio between the Ursa Mini Pro and the Pocket 4K is slightly different. I'm sure that has something to do with the difference in sensor size physically as well as the fact that the resolution is 4.6K as opposed to just 4K. Um, but you know in post-production you know you can basically scale to fit or resize to fit just ever so slightly so that you don't have any kind of weird aspect ratio changes between the two. Um, also, uh, what I was saying before about having all the settings the same, there is a slight color difference between the two cameras. I'm thinking that that is, has something to do with the IR cut filter that's always in front of the sensor of the Ursa Mini Pro on the left. Um, so I, I tried to match them as close as I could. I'm not really a colorist, um, but you can see the slight difference. But I'm sure that um, an expert colorist could easily go in there and make them match perfectly but it is just something to note and so I wanted to see what the lenses would look like on the pocket 4k with just a straight PL adapter no additional optics here is the 35 millimeter on the pocket 4k just a standard adapter one thing is noticeable right off the bat it's darker because now we don't have that extra stop of light coming through from the optical element so if I were to push it in post, one full stop, it becomes identical to the previous footage. And as you can see now, the field of view of the 35 on the Pocket 4K is now almost identical to the 50 millimeter with the speed booster. On the left is the Pocket 4K with the speed booster and the 50 millimeter. And on the right is the Pocket 4K without the speed booster and the 35 millimeter. Now here is the Pocket 4K with the 50mm without the speed booster. And if I had the 70mm lens, I'm sure it would look identical to the Ursa Mini Pro with the 70mm on it. And you also notice that the image is a full stop darker without the speed booster. I apologize uh, for the framing. Um, I didn't really have a lot of time to do the tests. I had to get the lenses shipped back. So I only had about 35, 40 minutes to pop off all of these shots. And I just kind of had to get it done, get it out and send the lenses off. So now that you've seen the tests, I want to show you some footage from the short film that I shot with these lenses. Um, the setup was the Pocket 4K with the speed booster and it's a combination of the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter anamorphot lenses. As you can see here, here's the 35. And then this is what it looks like with the 50 back and forth. Some varying shots that I have here. Um, I shot the entire thing at 1250 ISO just to kind of take away the uh, the grain that you would get at the 3200 ISO setting. I really didn't have to do very much in post at all. I didn't really need to bring out much. And all the information is there. And uh, it came out really nice. Just for a comparison, here is some footage of another short film that I DP'd. This was shot on the exact same lenses, 35, the 50, and I actually did use the 70, and it's also on the red Scarlet Weapon in 1.3 anamorphic mode. I believe it was 5K. 
I shot most of this film at the native 800 ISO that the red is. Um, almost all of the night stuff I shot at either 1250 or 1600. Um, this was actually the film where I kind of fell in love with these lenses. Um, it was my first time using them. I was really impressed with the overall performance. I loved the flaring. Everything that you see is all natural flares coming straight from the lens optically. Uh, nothing was added in post. And um, it was actually during some of these uh, bar scenes um, where I figured out how good the flaring could look. Uh, you know, even in low light performance, um, you know, some of the shots, you know, these lenses are 2.4 and they were still, they were still shining through, you know, goes to show what the, the camera sensitivity can do. Um, you know, that's, there's natural flaring just from um, kind of like lights going directly into the lens. Some shots have a light haze over them. I, I decided not to use a matte box so that I could get that kind of dreamy quality uh, in some of the shots. And overall, uh, I was just very, very happy with them. And you know, until I can find other 1.33 lenses, um, these are probably gonna be the ones that I continue using. Because they are true anamorphic lenses and they do get you that look. And you can manipulate however you want to reduce or enhance the flares. Um, but one thing I do recommend is, you know, don't use plugins, you know, the lenses can do the work. Flare it up, don't flare it up. Use matte boxes, don't use matte boxes. Um, you can get some really, really, really great results. Thank you so much for sticking through this with me. I know it was a long one, um, but uh, I felt like, you know, I needed to share it with people. There wasn't a lot of information on this topic it's something that I had to kind of go in and delve into myself and you know figure out how it works so I'm happy to share it with y'all if you have any other questions about it leave it in the comments um, I'm gonna try and start making more videos I'll probably get uh, you know a little bit tighter and um, a little less uh, me rambling I don't know I guess you know if you hate it let me know if not you know I, I can keep um, vomiting information at you so uh, anyways take care thanks for watching